Hi everyone, today I'm going to explain about ecosystem concept. From this, uh, from this subtopic, you should be able to define ecosystem and then describe the lake ecosystem based on its zonation and terrestrial ecosystem of tropical rainforest stratification. First, we have to understand uh, or able to define what is ecosystem. Ecosystem must consist of biotic, the living things, and abiotic, the non-living components, in a particular area. So, um, these biotic and abiotic components should be able to interrelate. They have relationship, meaning they need each other. Uh, the biotic the biotic components will use the abiotic components and produce uh, abiotic um, then uh, use up again so they are continually interact with each other biotic components are living things such as plants and animals and also decomposes abiotic components includes the hydrosphere which is the aquatic part uh, the are uh, the marine, the ocean, rivers, ponds, uh, and aquarium. Atmosphere includes the air, uh, the gases that we inhale and exhale. The atmosphere is the soil, the rock. Example of ecosystem. There are so many example of ecosystem. Even an aquarium. Is also considered an ecosystem, a very small area, a very small space. Uh, as long as there is interaction between biotic and abiotic components. So we are going to learn about two ecosystems here, which is the lake ecosystem and the rainforest, tropical rainforest ecosystem. This in, the interactions between the biotic and abiotic um, can show uh, the energy flow. When we learn about ecosystem, we are going to see we are going to learn about the energy flow, the transfer of energy from one organism to another organism, and also the cycling of the nutrients in the ecosystem through biogeochemical cycles. Lake ecosystem um, can be uh, is divided into zones, and the division of the zonation is based on two criteria: the light penetration and also the distance from shore and water depth. As you can see here, uh, the light penetration divides the zone uh, divide the lake into area that um, that receive the light and also uh, the area that does not receive the light the area does, that does not receive the light is called avoti based on distance from shore we uh, the, the the zone is divided into littoral and limnatic so littoral zone is uh, closer to the shore while limnatic zone is farther from the shore. The photic zone is the surface the water surface where the uh, they receive sufficient uh, sunlight to uh, so that photosynthesis can undergo in this area. While uh, uh, the photic zone the photic zone there are also uh, include the photic zone also includes the littoral and limnatic zone so they can be overlapping uh, in the photic zone of littoral in the photic zone of limnatic for photic zone littoral zone which is here is a well lit shallow water shallow means chete Atau tohor. This area is closer to the shore where we can find um, rooted plant like this. Misalnya um, contoh pokok keladi kan? And our floating aquatic plants such as hydrilla, they are they can be uh, they are usually uh, 
uh, attach to the soil of the littoral zone. Floating plants such as water lilies, uh, water lilies, or even though they can float, but the roots are attached to the soil. We can also duckweed that fully uh, floating with root submerged into the water. Or there are also insect larva that inhabiting the uh, area. For example, dragonfly, they, they, they lay eggs on the surface of a plant, of a leaf, and then the egg will um, hatch and produce the larva. Uh, contoh, nyamuk, ada jentik-jentik. Itu uh, adalah insect larva. Role of aquatic plants is usually, as, as we know, plants is a producer eh, for oxygen and for food. Provide food and produce an oxygen. They also uh, play a very important role uh, for a as a shelter for insects, crustaceans such as prawn, shrimp, also frogs, turtles and fish. The photic zone that includes the limnatic zone. It's farther from the shore and still receive sunlight penetration. They are well lit, open surface. Okay, open surface. This is open and well lit. Receive sunlight. Far away from the shore, it's a habitat. This area is a habitat for phytoplankton, zooplankton and fishes. To refresh your memory, phytoplankton is a protistar uh, that can undergo photosynthesis, which we uh, usually use the word algae. Eh? The plant like protistar. While zooplankton, whenever we find the word zoo, it's referring to animal. Even though. Uh, Protozoa is not an animal, they are protista, but they, they, uh, we use the word zooplankton to um, implying that they are animal-like protista. So zooplankton usually eat the phytoplankton and phyto fishes will eat the zooplankton. We can see a food chain here. Phytoplankton is the producer. So phytoplankton serves as the base of lakes food chain. Base of lake food chain is a producer. Eh? And producing oxygen. The aphotic zone is the open water that below the level of penetration. Um, the light is insufficient because the sunlight cannot penetrate to the to the to this area. So when there is no no not sufficient uh, where is there is no sufficient light photosynthesis cannot cannot undergo cannot be can cannot uh, cannot continue. A photic zone is situated beneath the photic zone, but uh, so, so it does not uh, exist in shallow lake. Shallow means chatek kan. So tasi and chatek sebab the sunlight reach all the way to the bottom of the pond, to the bottom. Jadi, tak ada aphotic zone in shallow lake or river. This area, the aphotic zone, is a habitat for detritivores. Detritivores are organisms that feed on that organism. The compensation point. Compensation point um, secara umumnya adalah kawasan is a, an area in between the photic and aphotic zone. Here. Conceptually, photic zone is where the photosynthesis is higher than the respiration process. So, uh, production, in other words, Production is higher than usage. While in aphotic zone, uh, production is less than usage. Because 
Since uh, sunlight cannot reach the aphotic zone, so there is no photosynthesis. Um, respiration is higher here. That was why in between, uh, there is an area in between this zone uh, that production is equal to usage. If we convert to the name of the process, then photosynthesis equal to respiration theoretically we assume that this area ha uh, has zero net primary productivity okay productivity uh, maksudnya kalau satu-satu kilang dia menghasilkan uh, 100 buah tv tetapi yang diperlukan oleh uh, populasi hanya 80 buah Jadi dia punya NPP, productivity dia adalah lebih 20 buah. Uh, kalau yang memerlukan melebihi, contohnya ada 150 uh, keperluan TV. Tapi mampu menghasilkan 100 sahaja. Uh, jadi dia ada negatif. NPP dia, net, uh, net primary productivity dia would be negatif. Maknanya tak cukup. Bila negatif maksudnya tak cukup. The productivity is lesser. Is less. So at this compensation point, di kawasan uh, area yang di mana productivity is equal to usage, the photosynthesis is equal to respiration. It is called compensation point. Kawasan ini dipanggil titik compensation. Eh? Titik compensation. Jadi kalau soalan dia bagi tahu, okay, di kawasan satu titik ni uh, NPP dia zero. So, apakah nama kawasan itu, area itu? Jawapan dia adalah compensation point. Atau dibagi nilai, um, in compensation point, the photosynthesis rate, uh, the photosynthesis rate is 5 gram per berapa-berapa. Then, calculate the respiration rate. Uh, do not do not do not get uh, nervous because you should know that compensation in compensation point the NPP is zero. So since photosynthesis is zero is five, respiration rate should be five. There is another zone that um, that is not fall that does not fall into uh, each criteria of lake zonation for example the light penetration or the distance from shore so this zone is called benthic zone atau ada cara nama nama yang lainnya dipanggil sebagai dasar okay benthic kita gunakan istilah benthic zone benthic zone is a bottom of all aquatic biomes mana-mana ekosistem sungai dasar dia kita panggil bent itu adalah benthic zone either shallow lake or deep lake uh, it is still called benthic zone so kalau macam tasik ni daripada kawasan daripada dasar sampai ke bawah yang paling dalam jurang yang paling dalam it is still a benthic zone so, benthic zone is a zone of decomposition meaning every living things that that die in that aquatic uh, aquatic uh, ecosystem will eventually sedimented ataupun uh, uh, kita panggil apa tenggelam tenggelam dan kemudian sediment atau uh, dia akan terdampar ke bawah this is benthic zone a zone of decomposition jadi bangkai-bangkai ataupun dead uh, dead organism yang uh, sedimented uh, ke bawah tu ke bawah, uh, duduk di dasar tu dia akan diuraikan oleh decomposer decay decay plants and animals will sink to the bottom and become sediments of the soil sediment ni mana-mana uh, kalau kita bancuh bersama-sama mula-mula dia terapung lama-lama dia akan sink to the bottom so this is called sedimentation eh? yang mana tak larut any parts yang tak larut dalam satu-satu mixture uh, dan tunggu bawah tu kita panggil sediment eh? Uh, dominated the benthic zone is dominated by oxygen consuming organism rather than oxygen producing organism so oxygen producing organism kita tahu dia adalah plant and also algae all those uh, photosynthetic organism 
and oxygen consuming is uh, the uh, animals, the protozoa, eh? semua yang menggunakan oksigen. Sebab apa? Uh, ni adalah kawasan sama ada walaupun matahari sampai, uh, it doesn't mean that um, apa ni, uh, decomposer tak boleh duduk kat situ. Dia akan duduk sebab dia ada makanan yang sesuai untuk dia. Dan um, maksud dominated ni bukan bermakna tidak ada tumbuhan langsung. Jadi uh, lebih banyak, lebih banyak uh, oxygen consuming organism rather than oxygen producing organism. The energy source for this organism come from organic matter that drift down from littoral and limnetic zone. Uh, kalau littoral tu drift down maksud dia tenggelam Kalau daripada tasik dia akan jatuh juga ke dasar eh? Dominated by bentos Kita panggil organisma yang duduk di kawasan dasar ni Kat tanah-tanah kat lumpur tu sebagai bentos uh, Which uh, com, con, which, contain, uh, uh, which includes decomposing bacteria and also fungi Terrestrial ecosystem Tropical rainforest is, uh, rainforest is very exclusive to our country and a few more countries that uh, is called uh, that uh, that includes the countries lies between the I think the Katulistiwa kita panggil eh lebarisan Katulistiwa kan so yeah yang tengah tengah ni Katulistiwa includes Indonesia kalau kita punya Southeast Asia kan a few more uh, a few more countries such as Brunei uh, kalau yang bukan sekitar Asian country ni uh, Southeast Asia ni includes uh, Amazon itu adalah tropical rainforest and tropical rainforest is very different from uh, forest tropical, tropical forest because it, the word rain in, meanings that our forest receive uh, large amount of rain throughout the year we have a very rich and diverse uh, species and structure of the forest our forests are divided uh, into five layers kita tengok dari segi uh, strata ada lima lapisan kalau you surf kat internet ada setengah uh, website dia hanya namakan empat layer saja tapi kita kita akan stick kepada lima layer sah lima layer eh the first the highest layer is the emergent more than 40 meters high of trees then we have the canopy understory shrub layer shrub ni kita panggil sebagai semua eh ground layer the forest floor ada setengah uh, reference digunakan forest floor so sama eh ground layer dengan forest floor Daripada infografik ni kita boleh nampak bahawa uh, emergent layer emergent layer um, includes all the highest plant. Kita nampak dia dia nama dia emergent sebab memang dia tertonjol eh. Uh, dia nampak kita nampak dia terkeluar daripada lapisan canopy. Uh, kemudian ini haiwan yang boleh yang akan mendiami inhabiting uh, the the layer. Biasanya sebab dia tinggi must be uh, haiwan yang uh, those animals that can either can fly or that can climb very high canopy then we have the understory understory bawah canopy shrub layer ground layer uh, siapa pernah hiking sampai nampak jumpa pokok-pokok yang emergent boleh maknanya uh, you akan nampak lah different uh, bila kita when we climb higher kita boleh nampak uh, beza tumbuh-tumbuhan yang tumbuh-tumbuhan yang wujud dekat uh, latitude yang lebih tinggi uh, kalau kita nak makin kita tinggi kita panjat bukan bermakna pokok tu makin tinggi, makin besar sebenarnya pokok tu makin rendah uh, jadi sebenarnya pokok-pokok uh, yang besar-besar ni duduk di kawasan rendah cuma dia boleh meninggi saja so you can read the trust uh, the type of uh, tree and animals uh, that uh, living in the each each different layers of our rainforest the tropic the emergent layer uh, usually consists of the crowns of the oldest uh, 
kita panggil pokok-pokok balak yang paling tinggi ni so chest tualang, pokok meranti, jati, pokok cengal eh? contoh tualang ada lebah, kita ada lebah banyak jenis ha, jadi kalau lebah yang memang um, memang duduk di pokok tualang kita panggil lebah tualang and it's very very uh, expensive sebab nak dapatkan madu dia tu hanya orang yang pandai yang boleh panjat ke atas saja kan so, biasanya kita perlu bantuan orang-orang asli yang boleh ambil madu tualang ni dan harga dia memang sangat mahal lah hmm. emergent layers they are exposed to direct sunlight so they have the warmest temperature direct sunlight and then because of the winds the strongest wind that they can get um, they have low humidity up there kat sana kat atas sana udara udara memang memang dia terdedah dengan laluan udara jadi uh, lepas tu terima cahaya matahari jadi suhu dia sangat tinggi suhu tinggi dan juga uh, kering Uh, and they are exposed to strongest wind sebab tu pokok-pokok yang emergent layer ni they have a very strong sturdy uh, body and also their root are very sturdy kita panggil dia bud root roots eh, eh salah kerja saya bud root eh? let me check Ah, buttress Sorry Buttress root Akar apa, Akar apa? Siapa tahu? Akar apa? Akar Kita panggil akar bane Akar bane ni selalu kalau pokok Dia punya akar dia tinggi Besar Okay Bukan setakat akar tunjang Right They are very strong and sturdy Canopy uh, Consists of uh, The The The, the The tree under canopy layer can reach height up to 35 meter. They also exposed to more sunlight, but less than. Uh, they they are exposed to uh, more sunlight. Almost the same. Sebenarnya sama dengan image. Cuma sebab dalam satu satu lapisan, satu lapisan akan ada a few image dalam satu kawasan. Uh, jadi, the uh, canopy still receive sufficient amount of uh, sunlight okay, as well as emergent. The example of plants uh, living in canopy layer are orchid, epiphytes. Eh? Epiphytes sebab apa? Orchid kan kecil-kecil because they uh, uh, they uh, they are living on a large tree pokok dia duduk di menumpang kan hmm, for example liana tree example of animals uh, that living in that living in canopy layer is insects bats and birds they can fly high okay but not as uh, usually not as high as image layer contoh insects dia mungkin tak sampai kat kawasan hujung uh, apa tu hujung pokok meranti tualang tu uh, kecuali kecuali lebah uh, ada certain insect tak sampai sebabnya udara dia uh, angin dia kuat kat atas eh understory layer receive little little light It already less than 5% sebab apa? sebab canopy ni dia bersambung-sambung dia akan membentuk canopy macam kema jadi dia akan menghalang laluan cahaya matahari ni katakan ni cahaya matahari ni pokok jadi ni pokok yang bagian uh, pokok liana ni bersambung-sambung ni kan jadi cahaya matahari tak sampai ke bawah ni sikit saja hanya through through the uh, leaves ataupun ni uh, you boleh cari dekat internet gambar canopy ataupun siapa-siapa yang pernah pergi frame ada canopy walk apa semua boleh nampak ada corak sebab dia punya pokok tu uh, ada susunan dia tu uh, sangat rapat sebab tu uh, understory layer bawah canopy ni 
dia terima cahaya yang sedikit because of that um, the plants living in understory layer are usually plants that can adapt to climb the already established host trees such as lianas uh, dia memanjat pokok emergent contohnya uh, macam ni macam uh, vine kan uh, kalau ikut gambar ni uh, biasanya uh, pokok ni dia akan memanjang tinggi tapi kurus uh, sebab dia nak uh, uh, fight for the exposure to sunlight shrub layer shrub layer consists of smaller plants they receive less light uh, which is 2 to 3 percent and most rain rainforest mammals such as sloth sloth ni kalau bahasa melayu sloth ni um, uh, sus. one example of animals under sloth is kungkang Sloth is a slow moving animal. Slow moving tropical uh, tropical mammal. Um, monkeys also live in shrub layers, uh, but they only live on tree and nak kata never climb down to the crown kadang bila dia perlukan cari makanan makanan kat atas biasanya kenapa monkey, uh, monyet ni dia makan buah-buahan yang memang ada dekat batu pokok jadi there is uh, they are they usually uh, do not need to climb down the tree but when they have no sufficient food source there tak ada buah-buahan dah lagi uh, there is a possibility that they go down to the Uh, ground uh, kalau ki, especially kalau ki, dia masuk kawasan kampung yang ada tanaman buah-buahan eh? contoh macam keladi kita tanam pokok pisang, kita tanam uh, pokok apa eh, dekat atas eh, pokok tembikai, so dia akan turun ground layer mostly ferns consists of ferns and some flowering plants such as hibiscus and then uh, kita punya ground layer forest floor ni uh, ada daun-daun mati lah fallen trees, dead animals uh, Uh, all of these uh, dead organism quickly decompose by bacteria and fungi. So this uh, rapid recycling um, um, menyebabkan kita punya forest floor kita uh, bersih ataupun kita jat kita uh, dia punya decaying matters tu cepat cepat hilang cepat cepat uh, ni lah cepat cepat uh, decompose uh, terurai. And then the decomposition of the nutrients also usually quickly taken up by plants. Sebab kita, kita, kita um, tanah hutan kita dianggap poor mineral soil. Our forest floor, our ground, or uh, our forest ground is considered as poor mineral soil. Tanah yang mengandungi uh, mineral yang rendah. Kenapa? Sebab we have so many trees and even though we have decomposing matters ataupun decompose that organism because they are quickly decomposed and then the plants are so many, they absorb the nutrients very fast. So our soil is very, is poor mineral. So kalau kita ambil tanah dekat hutan, ke hutan dan uh, kemudian kita nak tak ambil untuk tanam pokok uh, kita kena treat tan the the soil first uh, with some more mineral such as calcium, potassium and phosphorus. Berbanding dengan tanah yang dekat uh, pas pantai contoh pasir pantai. Pasir pantai kita nampak pokok tak banyak. Kita tak kata dia tak subur tetapi dia tinggi mineral such as calcium, phosphorus. Kenapa? Sebab pokok-pokok tak banyak. Jadi, tak ada pokok yang menyerap ke mineral tersebut. Sebab tu bila kita ambil pokok pasir di pantai dengan tanah di, di, di hutan, bila kita bandingkan, kita menganggap dia lebih subur di hutan sebab banyak pokok. Tapi sebenarnya dia punya kandungan mineral dia banding dengan di pantai kandungan mineral di tanah hutan lebih rendah uh, sebab sudah diserap oleh tumbuh-tumbuhan okay. 
Okey, terima kasih. Terima kasih itu sahaja dari saya untuk 2.1.